Hi, this is Herbs Pro with the Dr. Vax channel. I am very excited to be making this video today. Over the last three years, I've produced over 150 videos teaching people how to use desktop technologies to make things. Today, I'm going to go one step further. I'm going to provide you all with completely free open source software that you can use from your Chrome or Microsoft Edge browser to help you calibrate your 3D printer. This software will make it much easier to connect over a USB cable to your 3D printer with a working G-code terminal you can use to issue commands and see the responses. So if you want to learn more about calibrating a 3D printer and how to do it with just a computer and a Chrome or Edge browser, stay tuned and let's learn something together. Now, before I get started showing you this new and exciting software, I want to encourage you to subscribe to the channel, click on the bell below, so you'll be notified of any new videos that are available. In addition, I sponsor a completely free discussion forum at forum.drvax.com, where you can leave comments about this video, about this new software, but you also can feel free to leave comments right here on YouTube. Now, maybe you received a 3D printer that was fully assembled. This is an Ender 3 version 2. There's some assembly required, 30 to 45 minutes, depending on your skill level. Maybe your manufacturer even told you it's fully calibrated. So why do you need to watch this video? Well, because 3D printers are mechanical devices. There are lots of moving parts. Moving parts where? That causes them to misalign. That causes them to fail. Moving parts are not manufactured exactly the same. They attempt, depending on the manufacturer, to make them close but they vary a little bit. The electronics, the sensors in your 3D printer will be different than anyone else's. So you periodically need to recalibrate and do routine maintenance on your 3D printer. It's no different than your car. You change the oil, you grease the axle, you go for a tune-up, you put air in the tires. I'm gonna show you how to do those things on your 3D printer. And I'm gonna show you how to do it using a brand new piece of software that I'm providing as open source. That means you can modify it and make it your own if you choose to, if you're a programmer, or you can just go to a website I'm providing where you can use this software to calibrate your 3D printer. I'm gonna start by going right to this new software. So let's look at the screen together. You'll see here on the screen, there is navigation across the top to various Dr. Vask locations. So if I click here on youtube.com, you'll see the channel page for Dr. Vax. If you click on about, you'll learn a little bit about me and you'll see a link to the discussion forum a place you can talk about the software and other things. We can go back to home. And then on the left-hand side, you'll see I'm providing initially four utilities. There'll be updates, there'll be more included in the future. For right now, let's start with the checklist. So if you need to calibrate your device, you need to think about what should you do how often should you do it? And what equipment do you need to calibrate this to print perfectly? Let's begin with the equipment checklist. 
So the first thing you'll need, and these are probably provided with your printer, is a couple hex or Allen wrenches. There are a variety of connections between the various extrusions here in a variety of places that need to be tightened. Let's talk about tightening for a minute. How tight is the right amount? Well, with these devices, you do not want to over tighten things. They're often made of plastic or aluminum, various materials that if you over tighten them, you're going to break them. So the right amount to tighten something is till it's finger tight, it's snug, and then turn it another quarter of a turn. So you should finger tighten it and then turn it another quarter of a turn, and that will get the tightness correct. Now, another tool you're going to need is a spanner. The reason you need this is on many of these 3D printers, in particular the Creality line and printers made like the Creality line, you'll see a variety of wheels that ride on extrusions. And I'll show you close-up pictures of all these things. When you have a series of wheels riding on extrusions, you'll see one of them has a nut behind it. That's called an eccentric nut. Here's a picture of what that looks like. That's a nut with a ring where there's a hole in the nut that's not in the center of the ring. So as you turn the nut, that ring will push more or less pressure against the extrusion. You adjust those nuts to adjust these wheels. And once again, you want these wheels to be snug so that you can turn them, but there's friction. And the reason for that is that it will ensure that the mechanism held by the wheels and the print bed has wheels like these underneath and the X axis has wheels like these on the side will ensure that it's snug and there's no lateral movement. There's no extra movement. So you'll need the spanner that came with your printer. You'll need to have a ruler because in order to calibrate the number of steps this stepper motor needs to turn to extrude the proper amount of filament, you'll need to make some measurements. And then I find it very, very helpful to have a digital caliper. Let me show you why. One of the things you should do to get started with your 3D printer is print a calibration cat. Go into Thingiverse, search for calibration cat. This is gonna come up. Now, what's beautiful about this cat is it has a number of features that allow you to check the quality of your 3D printer. So you can check overhangs, you can check layer alignment, you can check fine features, these ears on the top. And this Ender 3 is pretty well calibrated. So this came out beautifully. But one of the things you absolutely wanna check is size. So what do you do? Well, you hit the zero on your caliper. So you close it all the way, hit zero. Then you open it up and you measure one of the dimensions. So this dimension is 20.02. That's pretty good for a consumer grade printer. As a matter of fact, it's excellent. I find in general consumer grade printers, if you're calibration is within a tenth of a millimeter, you're doing well. Let's look at the other dimension. And the other dimension there came in also at 20.2. That means that printing in both the X dimension and the Y dimension, the accuracy of this printer is spot on. Now, if the overall size is too large, what does that mean? It means you're probably over extruding. You should go into your slicer and check your extrusion multiplier. That's what it's called in Prusa or your flow rate. That's what it's called in Cura. And you might need to fine tune that. If it's too small, you're probably under extruding. Now, another way to adjust that more precisely is to make sure that when your printer thinks it's extruding 100 millimeters of filament, it actually is. 
And to adjust that, we're going to learn how to adjust E-steps. Before we go into that detail, let's go back to our checklist for a minute. And you'll see here there's a section before your first print. It says, tighten up all the bolts. Remember, finger tight and an extra quarter turn. Then check all the belts. You'll notice there's a belt under here on the Ender 3. Depending on your printer, there will also potentially be belts on your bed. How tight should those belts be? Well, they should be firm, not loose and flabby at all. They should be firm, but the goal is not to over tighten them. So here on the Ender 3, let me turn this a little bit for you. You can see there's an adjustment right here on the end. This is on the version two for the belt. Some printers have a little slider that you slide over and tighten down. Some printers really don't have good adjustments for the belts. But these belts, and they're hard to see, I'll show you once again a close-up, They should you should be able to deflect them. But they should be firm when you deflect them. Let me put this back now because we're going to look at the extruder in a minute. What's next? Let's go back to the list. You need to make sure that you've adjusted the eccentric screws on the guide wheels. You need to level the print bed. There are hundreds of videos on leveling the print bed, including maybe as many as half a dozen on this channel. So make sure you learn how to level your print bed. I recommend manually leveling your print bed. That's where you adjust these knobs under the print bed or the bolts under the print bed. On every printer, even if you have an ABL system, periodically. You want the auto bed leveling system to fine tune your print, not to do the heavy lifting. Now, one good trick for a new printer. You have a brand new printer. When you first turn it on, you don't want the print head to slam into the print bed if it's mistuned. So what I like to do is to tighten these screws completely. That will pull the print bed down. That'll give you the maximum distance between your print head and your print bed. Then using the appropriate mechanism for your printer, that might be a menu entry where you turn it on and you say go to the various corners in order to level your print bed. That's a standard feature in Marlin version two. If you don't have that in the videos on the Ender 3 and Ender 5, I show you how to manually turn the Z screw very slowly until you trigger your bed switches. These are the switches right here that indicate when you're in the zero position. So you lower the print gantry until you first trigger this, you know you're in the zero position, then you loosen up your four corners until your print head is the distance of a sheet of 20 pound paper. I like to use post-it notes from the print head. There are lots of videos on that. So manually level your print bed. Next, calibrate the extruder. We're going to do that together. Calibrate the temperature on your printer. We're going to do that together and then print another calibration cat to make sure your printer is properly aligned. Now, if you go to this guide, you'll see I'm giving you recommendations for every five prints, every 20 prints, every 50 prints. One of the things I recommend is about every 50 prints, you can do this more often, make sure this Z access rod is slightly lubricated. You don't want it to be coming off a lot on you. I like using super lube, but I find pretty much any of the silicon lubes will work. This one's a little thin for me. This one, you just put a little bit on your finger and rub it up and down to make sure it's lubricated. Okay, now let's learn about calibrating temperature and E-steps using a G-code terminal. Prior to the availability of the software that uh, I wrote over the last few weeks, you had to load a piece of software onto your computer or connect Octoprint to your printer to get a G-code terminal. You could use Matter Control by Matter Hackers. I like that a lot. There are a number of other alternatives. This is even simpler. All you need is a Chrome browser or a Microsoft Edge browser, 
and you go to this site. Let's first learn about the terminal. So I'm going to click on terminal here. And if I go and I attempt to connect now, you'll see I see the two Bluetooth ports on my Mac, but I don't see a serial port listed here at all. So I can hit cancel and let's turn on my Ender 3. The Ender 3 fans are a little bit noisy, so you'll hear that probably in the video. And now if I click on connect, you'll see there's a USB serial port listed. It's a really good trick, both with Macs and with PCs and with Chromebooks, is leave your printer off, click connect, Take note of what ports are showing up. You might have other things plugged in. Cancel out of it, turn your printer on, click connect and look for the new port. That new port is your printer. So I'm going to click on that and click connect. If you do not get an error message, it's working fine. Let me show you what it'll look like if you try to connect to an already connected printer or to the wrong port. You'll see connection failed click disconnect and try again. So we'll disconnect there. Now we'll reconnect. Now, the way this works is you type a command in here, followed by a return key, and that command will get sent to the printer. So I'll type M115, which is a command to display the version of G code, the version of firmware is a better description that's on my printer. I'm gonna hit enter. You'll see here that command was sent and I get a message back, unknown command. Why? Marlin by default, most builds of Marlin require you enter commands in uppercase. So if I enter M115, enter, you'll now see it's telling me this is Marlin bug fix build 2.0 and a variety of information. Now, since normally you want to use uppercase, I've gone to the trouble of adding a feature in this terminal that says uppercase commands. I'm going to clear the log here. Now, if I type M115, return, you'll see it sent uppercase even though I entered lowercase. So that's basically how you use this terminal. Now on the right hand side, you'll see a variety of commands that I find useful because I never remember these. And these are the commands that you use most often for calibrating a printer. So let's begin by calibrating this extruder. Now this extruder is basically a set of gears connected to a stepper motor that turns. And we need to know how many turns are required in order to extrude a millimeter of filament. Now, what does it mean extrude? It doesn't mean a millimeter comes out of the nozzle. It means a millimeter is fed in. Now, measuring a millimeter is a little bit hard, so we're going to extrude 100 millimeters and measure how much and look at the difference between what we extruded and what we expected and use that percentage to adjust the steps in our firmware. So begin with, I'm going to clear the log here, and we need to find out what the current setting is for extrusion steps. We see that M503 will display the save parameters. So I'm gonna type in M503, enter, and you'll see a whole bunch of stuff down here. In fact, there's multiple pages. What we're going to look at right now is line 64 and 65. Steps per unit is the message, and then there's an M92 command. At the end of the M92 command is E93. E stands for extruder. Now, there are stepper motors on X, Y, and Z also. Those you normally don't have to tune. If you need to, because your calibration cat is not at all square, is Michael over at Teaching Tech, another YouTube channel, has an excellent tutorial on the calibrating 
the x, y, and z axes. I'm going to assume yours is pretty close because normally it is, and it's the extruder that you need to calibrate. So to calibrate the extruder, we need to find a new value for E93. So the old value we're going to take and write down. So the old value is, as I said, E93. And now I'm going to measure here 120 millimeters of filament. Now you may be asking, why am I measuring 120? And I'm marking that on my filament. Well, I'm going to extrude 100. When I extrude 100, if I measured off 100, if it extrudes too much, meaning there are too many steps, I'm not going to be able to see my mark. It's going to be inside the extruder. So by measuring 120, I can see when it's too little and too much. Now to extrude filament, I need to bring my printer up to temperature. So let me clear my log here. And I see here that I can set the temperature with an M104 command. So M104 S200, that'll set my temperature to 200, enter and it says okay. But printer doesn't get up to temperature immediately. I need to wait for it to get to the proper temperature. Now I could just turn the printer around to look at the front cancel, but I have a terminal here. So I'm going to get a temperature report. So I'm gonna issue M105, enter. And you can see the temperature right now, let me highlight this line, move my cursor out of the way. It's currently 63 degrees centigrade, and it's targeting 200 degrees. Let me enter another M105 command. M10, whoops, 105, enter. And now it's at 120 degrees, so we're getting close. Okay, let's enter another M105 command, and we'll see it's now at 200 degrees. And you may actually see, if you look at the nozzle over here in the corner, let me turn this a little bit so it's easier for you to see. If you look at the nozzle, you may see some filament dripping from the nozzle. We're not interested in that. We're not measuring the amount of filament that comes out of the nozzle. We're measuring the amount that's been pulled through because that's controllable by the extruder. The amount that comes out will depend on the nozzle size, it will depend on the temperature, it will depend on the characteristics of the filament. We want to look at the amount that go, gets pulled through. So how do we do that? Well, if you see down here is a command G1, and let's take and copy that, and we'll paste it in up here, G1 E100 F100. That says extrude from the extruder 100 millimeters of filament at 100 millimeters per minute. So let's hit enter and see what happens. And you'll see that this printer is now turning. I'm gonna turn this back a little bit so you can see the actually the knob is turning here and there is filament coming out of my extruder. Now you wanna make sure that your nozzle is above your print bed so there's room for it to come out. If it's jammed into the print bed, it's gonna create a problem. So we see this continues to extrude and how long is this gonna take? One minute. We're getting close. You can see right here that my mark is getting close and it just stopped. So now I need to measure from the extruder to the mark to see what's left. If 20 millimeters is left, it's perfect. If more is left, it under extruded. If less is left, it over extruded. What's left is 28. So it under extruded by eight over 100 or 8%. So how do we adjust that? Well, go to the function here, go to the menu entry called extruder steps, put in the original value, 
was 93. Put in what's left, I said it was about 27. And the new E value you should enter is 100. So we should change E steps from 93 to 100 on this printer. Now, this came out pretty darn close, um, but I guess I'm off by just a little bit. So let's go to the terminal. Now we can do an M503, and there are our existing values. And now we want to update the value. So let's look over here. We're going to do an M92. Let me clear the log to make this easier for you to see. M92 E100, enter. And this time I got an OK back. Now, that's going to be the new value until I turn the printer off. But what if I want to save that value so it doesn't go away when I turn it off? Well, I enter an M500, and I see saved, settings, stored. So now I've stored those values. Now, we adjusted the filament extrusion so it's even better than it was. Now let's adjust the temperature calibration on our printer. If we do an M503 command again, we'll see one of the things that's listed here is, it's on the next screen, I think. Ah, it's actually at line 110, so it's all the way on a couple screens down, are the PID settings. PID is an algorithm used to heat up your nozzle. You see, you can't just turn on the heating element, wait for the nozzle to get to the right temperature and turn it off because the residual heat in the heating element will cause it to overshoot. And you can't just wait for it to come down to the right temperature because it will keep going down. So you need an algorithm about when to turn it on and off, and that's the PID algorithm. And you can see that here, the definitions of how to tune PID on this second tab here. Let's go back to our terminal for a second. Here we go, M503, enter. And we'll go to that entry again. Hit settings, and we'll see here on M503, there are three values, P, I, and D. And what we want to do is we want to find new P, I, and D values. And the way we do that is we issue a command to Marlin that's going to attempt to ramp up the nozzle to a given temperature. It's then going to measure how much it overshoots with the thermistor in your printer. Then it's going to measure how quickly it goes down, and it's going to do that a number of times to get new values. Then we're going to enter those new values into this terminal. So in order to do the set the PID extruder auto tune, you do an M303S and your temperature. So let's take and copy that. And we'll paste that. So M303 E0S20 and hit enter. And it says here that PID auto tune has started and it's now reporting back the current temperature. Now this is going to take a while. Let's wait for this to complete and then I'll show you what to do next. Now it says auto tune has finished. Put these values into your configuration.h. Well, that would be if you want to burn them into Marlin. What we're going to do instead is copy these values down. And now let's go back up here, clear the log, and let's enter these in to be saved in our firmware. So in order to enter them in, you do an M301 and then the values. So M301 P23.69 
I 1.85 D 75.97, enter. And it says those were sent to our printer and successfully entered. Now, if you want to make this permanent, once again, so it will stay when you power cycle your printer, all you do at this point is enter an M500, and it will save those values away. Well, folks, I hope this was useful. Please try out this utility and leave me feedback at forum.drvats.com. Subscribe to the channel. Click on the bell. Leave comments below. Feel free to share this URL, 3D Printing Tools, 3D hyphen printing hyphen tools.drvax.com with anyone you want on any of the discussion boards or places you talk about 3D printing. I'm happy to have provided this utility to support com the community. Thanks so much for watching. Let's continue to learn together.